Hey everybody, I want to welcome you back to another episode of Westminster Wednesday where each week we are looking at one question from the Westminster Shorter Catechism and exploring its meaning and significance for our lives today. And uh, in previous episodes, we have talked about the moral law and we've seen that God revealed his moral law to us for our obedience. Well, we're going to explore that a little bit more deeply in this episode, and we're actually going to look at two questions in the Catechism that are related to one another. And the first one is question 41, which asks, where is the moral law summarized? The answer says, the moral law is summarized in the Ten Commandments. So this answer points to a very simple truth, which is that if you want to find a summary of what God's moral law is all about, you can find it in the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments are a summary of God's moral law. Now, if you have ever read the Shorter Catechism all the way through, you will quickly discover that a huge portion of the Catechism is devoted to the Ten Commandments. A total of 42 out of the 107 questions are focused on the Ten Commandments. That's 39% of the entire catechism. So the question is, why such a huge focus on the Ten Commandments? Well, the simple answer is they are the summary of God's moral law, and therefore they are the pattern for how we are to live our lives. And that means that the Ten Commandments are hugely uh, important. Now, it's important to recognize, as we have said multiple times in previous episodes, that we are not saved by following God's moral law. We're saved by grace alone. And you see that pattern even if you go back to when the Ten Commandments were first given in the book of Exodus. In the book of Exodus, God didn't require his people to follow his law in order to be saved out of slavery in Egypt. Rather, he saved them by his grace and then after bringing them out of slavery, gave them his law as the pattern of life that they were to follow as his redeemed people. Well, the same is true in our lives today. We're not saved by following God's moral law. That would be impossible. We're saved by grace alone through faith alone. But God gives us his moral law as a pattern that we are to follow after we have been saved. We follow his law as the pattern of life for the redeemed people of God. So question 41 points us to the reality that the moral law is summarized in the Ten Commandments. Now, if you look at question 42, it builds on that and it asks, what is the sum of the Ten Commandments? And the answer, the sum of the Ten Commandments is to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, all our soul, and with all our strength, and with all our mind, and our neighbor as ourselves. Now, you will probably notice, if you look at that question and answer, that this is pointing to something that Jesus said in the Gospels. Um, there is one occasion when Jesus was approached by a man and he was asked what the greatest commandment of the law is. And Jesus responded with these words. He said, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. This passage is sometimes what we call the two great commands of Jesus. Now, some Christians today operate as if the two great commandments have replaced God's law. And so they act as if, you know, we don't need all of those other commandments that we find in the Old Testament. All that's really important is if we're following the two great commandments of Jesus. But that's a fundamental misunderstanding because Jesus didn't give the two great commandments in order to supersede the law. He gave the two great commandments to summarize the law. So all of the law, Jesus says, depends on these two commands. All of the law can be summed up and summarized in these two commands. And what Jesus is telling us is that law and love are intimately connected and they must be kept together. We're commanded to love God and to love our neighbor. But how do we do that? The answer is we look to God's law and God's law shows us how to love. If you look at the Ten Commandments, you'll notice that the first four commandments pertain to our relationship with God and the, the other six pertain to our relationship with our neighbor. 
one way to think about the Ten Commandments then is to understand them as the first four commands showing me how to love God, that first great commandment, and the other six showing me how to love my neighbor, the second great commandment. Uh, so the Ten Commandments and the two great commandments are not opposed to each other. They are actually one and the same. The commandments, the two great commandments that Jesus gave were not intended to replace the law. They were not intended to supersede the law. They were intended to summarize the law. The Ten Commandments are still the heart of God's law, and therefore they are still the pattern for the Christian life today. But we have to remember that law and love are not opposed to each other. And in fact, it is in following God's law that we fulfill those two great commands of Jesus, to love God with all of our whole being and to love our neighbor as ourselves.